Some 160 years ago, dozens of Aboriginal families called this area home. They'd lived here for millennia, surviving off the land. European arrival heralded not only upheaval, but one remarkable story of defiance and endurance. This is where the central person in, in our story was out on these clay pans with all the families that lived here, all his family. And what they done is, on the Woodarada Ranges, which is those hills way back over this side of us, there was lots of camps up there where the people camped. They knew they were safe there, but they had to come down for tucker. But early shepherds in this region put their sheep there. And the sheep was keeping the kangaroos away. So, Ijika, to feed his family, he speared a sheep. And that is why he was arrested. He was arrested here the first time and marched all the way into um, Mount Gould, put in neck chains and marched all the way back to Port Gregory. Put on a boat and sent to Rottnest Island. He would have been among 4,000 Aboriginal prisoners incarcerated at the island in horrendous conditions over 100 years. Well, they were basically chained or in the cell, which is quite horrendous when you think about not only being in the cell with that many people, but being chained as well. And there was no sanitation, so you just basically slept in your own um, urine and faeces. And if you were sick, um, your own vomit. We don't know how long it took that easy go teamed up with some, they either, either stole a boat or he swam back. And he walked all the way back up here to Yellowlong. That walk was more than 800 kilometres, the ocean crossing nearly 20 kilometres. And upon making it home to his family in the Murchison, the law again caught up with him. It was a number of months or whatever before they realised where he'd be. So the second time they came up here is when they galloped him down on horses. The troopers were on horses and they galloped him down. One of the horses actually fell on his feet and crippled him. He was very close to those Woodrata Rangers back down the line here. And if he would have got to them, they would have no hope of catching him. But they galloped, galloped him down before he got there. And of course they took him back. Now, some say that he, he, he made it back, but we, we haven't heard anything about what happened after that. While no records exist of an Isaac Egan having been imprisoned at Rotnest, there are records of some successful escapes. According to all records, nobody swam off the island. Um, but 30 people did escape over that period of time, all from stealing um, a boat. There were a few drownings, but most were captured and returned to the island. Some did get away, and those that did escape or were released, because you know, there obviously were thousands that were released, they weren't sent back um, formally to their um, homelands. They were just told to move back themselves. It would have been really hard for a lot of these Aboriginal prisoners to move back through your, to your traditional country. So anyone that did that... Um, is obviously a grand story and one that needs to be applauded. Fast forward through the years and the legend of Isaac lived on through story. Gavin remembers his mother singing songs of his great-grandfather's escape from Rotnest and his long journey home. The, the last person to sing in that song was my mother. I, I can't remember the words now. Gavin has now gathered generations of his family and taken them back to the site of his great-grandfather's story in the hope of ensuring his legend lives on. I, I, I think that um, he, he, was a, he was a brave soul. I think um, that there's a lot of people actually 
took it upon themselves to defy authority and um, to say, say that we we can survive and we have survived with all those atrocities.